Okay, today we're gonna to do a proper video on gallery gaskets yep, and why sure. you need to, uh, if you have any, what, a VHR 2014 or older? Yeah, anything older than that. I believe 2014 is the year they fixed it. 2008 to 2014, yeah, you need oil gallery gaskets. At some point, factory defect gasket. Yeah, is so pretty much from the factory, they use just a paper style gasket. And what happens is that gasket blows apart and you pretty much end up with an internal oil leak, which, um, you know, you lose oil pressure. Uh, best case scenario, you don't have an issue um, or an actual, like, large failure with the engine and you just end up with, like, you know, your variable cam timing not following its target very well. Um, worst case scenario, you spin a rod bearing because you end up low on oil pressure. Um, but, yeah, they all need it to get done. Um, doesn't matter what the mileage is, doesn't matter how you treat your car, it's a, uh, you need it if your engine's between, you know, 2008 to 2014. VHR. Yeah, yeah. no questions asked. Um, that's just what it is, so. It will happen at some time. Nissan knows, or Infiniti knows, right? Um, yeah. They, mean, they're yeah. just like, hey. They, they, they rectified the issue, so then they, they knew about it, but you know. Yeah, um, so right now there's no signs on this that there is an issue. It's just preventative. Yeah. So but I I'm remember last sure. time we did preventative, right? <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, uh, you drop the oil it. pan and you find the gasket laying right in the bottom of the oil pan. Yeah. So I wonder if that's what we're going to run into on this one too. Because, How many miles is this one? Because um, I know, even though it doesn't matter. 140 something? Still interested to know. 140. Oh, I don't plug the battery. Oh, okay. I think it was actually. I think it's like 147. It is higher. Yeah, higher. 140s or 150s. Uh, it might have been like 122 actually. I just need the requirements. Yeah, somewhere around there. Over 100,000. Over 100,000 miles. That's easy. Okay. Um, but yeah, again, mileage doesn't mean anything because it's not. It's just it, it happens. Yeah. You know, it that doesn't matter. And you know, everybody has this misconception that oh, once you hit 80,000 uh, 80, miles, you need your oil galley gas to get stuff. No, once you drive it off the lot, you need your oil galley gas to get stuff. <laughs> 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 so, Unfortunately. Yeah. It's not something you want to gamble and play around with and find out because, you know, the problem is you either have an issue or you don't. And the problem is when you have an issue and you risk having that issue, it'll cost you an engine. So that's just what it is, you know. So make your, uh, make your appointment to do your oil galley gaskets now. <laughs> So we're gonna get started on this one, and um, you know, I guess just kind of show the process of how everything goes. And do you get suggest this one um, people do this themselves, with uh, or what kind of? Because you know, people want to. We do. You know, people do do their own work, and um, which is good. Uh, any like any tips? It's not gonna be like a how-to here for you, no. but we are gonna. It's, it's it's one of those things where it's like. You can screw it up pretty easy. And if you screw it up, you know, again, it, it's another one of those things where you screw it up, it can cost you an engine. Uh, you know, best case scenario, you just have an oil leak because you didn't do the RTV job right on the, you know, on the uh, timing covers. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you screw something up deeper than that and then it costs you an engine anyways, even though you're doing the galley gasket. So it's like... Yeah, if you don't feel comfortable with it, this it wouldn't be something like to try for the first time. <laughs> no, not, unless, what I'm not unless you want to gamble your engine. You so. know, yeah. But having people out there gambling your engine anyways by not doing the old galley gaskets. Yeah. So um, what are how do how do we start here? We're just going to remove all this. Um, yeah. Covers. So pretty much we're going to try to make as much room as possible in between the radiator and the engine, so we can pull a timing cover. Okay. So draining the coolant, radiator hoses, taking out the overflow tank, uh, removing the cooling fans, and then um, fans down there. we'll. we'll uh, drain the oil, remove the lower pan, um, pull off the serpentine belt and accessories, and just start, you know, disassembling the front of the engine to pull that cover off. And yes, we need to get in here. Yeah. And as you can see, all this stuff has to come out first. Yeah. We need room. We so. need room. So we're going to make some room. I'm going to be helping today. Yep. You're going to be doing all Exciting. the work. Exciting. Making your ass do all the work. Yeah. I'm not fully incompetent, but uh, see, it's always good to have somebody who knows what they're doing when you're when you're tearing stuff apart for the first time. 
So yeah, all right, what do we need? Stuff for labeling too, right? Because you're gonna have all the little yeah, just... bolts and stuff. I don't know, how many are there, a bunch? Yeah, enough, enough to need bags. Yeah, Ziploc bags, anytime you're working on your car and you're tearing apart something for the first time, um, or even just tearing apart something that's gonna require removal of a lot of parts and hardware, Ziploc bags are your best friend. Every time you pull something off, any hardware, throw it in a Ziploc bag, label where it came from because it's easy to get stuff mixed up. Yeah, the um, worst is know. when you have a box and you're like, oh, uh, I yeah. think I know where this goes. Uh, yeah. Bolts come in many shapes, colors, sizes, and, you know. Thread pitch. Yeah. yeah. So it's like the last thing you want to do is put a bolt that's too short in the hole, and when you torque it down, you yank the threads out because it ain't long enough to get good thread engagement. Or, you know, using the wrong bolt that doesn't have the right clamping force, or, you know what I mean? So it takes takes a little bit of extra time, but it saves you time in the long run because it's easy to just pick up a bag and say, okay, I need my timing cover bolts, they're in this bag. Yes. You know, I need these, this hardware, this bolt, they're in this bag, and it's labeled to put away. Yes, there's nothing bad about the Ziploc bag. No. Nothing. No. I mean, you can pick up a hundred count of Ziploc bags for, what, 20 bucks? You know? hundred count? You think 20 bucks? That's a lot. Probably like five bucks. Uh, I don't know. That's Pla 30 count. Pla plastic's gone up nowadays, so. All right. Okay. Well, I'll be back. I'll do, I guess I could do a time lapse. Yeah, you could do a time lapse. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have a hard time. That one didn't look too bad though. Why do we have to put the plug back in? Because we already, already drained the coolant, that way it doesn't keep having a small drip. Okay. So, yep, just shove it bubble down. Oh, can I start it? Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, that's better. <laughs> Yo, I got coolant all over me. It's just my least favorite. So I don't want to kill this, right? No, just, just snug it up. It's plastic, so just snug it up. Is that snug? Feel it. Tester. I did good. It's snugging. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and then... Edgar's gonna kill me today. He's supposed to. Be, this is supposed to help him be faster and he's explaining everything to me so it's not um all right so we'll drain this and i'll put this here because when i yank this hose off colon's gonna come out oh, sorry it's my <laughs> all right am i in the splash zone those of you in the splash zone, look out! Oh, I You don't necessarily have to take it off to do the job. The problem is, all these hoses have been on here for so long that the shit's probably all gunked up and corroded, and all that's gotta get cleaned off, or else you'll just end up with coolant leaks. That's this. So how, take this off, how do you, you get gotta the... go around the back. <gasps> Ooh, shit, <laughs> it's still so, so cool. 
You have to go around what? Around oh. the back of the pensioner. Oh, behind it? Yes. Okay. Is he getting a new belt or? Um, I think we have a new one. We still have to see. Yeah, I really made a mess with that hose. I guess it doesn't matter that way. That's what happens. Alright. Alright. So next, we gotta start yanking all these idler pulleys off. How do you get the uh, pulleys off? The 14 millimeter wrench. This one is the bolt to the tensioner. Crack that loose. Nice. And I get my bit out of there from my belt tool. So all the pulleys have to come off, obviously. Well, yeah. the bottom one, well, too? No. That crank pulley, yes. Oh, sorry, that was me, anyway. Why? Because you have to get the cover off, right? Yeah, yeah. Cover off. that's right. It's been a while since you've done one of these jobs, I forgot. So, there's, so. do do you, that bracket's gotta come off for the alternator. Is that a 12? Yep. Ooh, I'm getting good at eyes. What did you say to me the other day? You were like, it's, it's always 12. Here, <laughs> it's always these cars are put together with like five sockets. <laughs> 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 19. Okay, good. It'll be good for my next guess then. At least so I know. So unfortunately, this is why you have to take the fans off. You got to take the alternator off to get the timing cover off because the alternator pretty much bolts to partially the front timing cover. So when you go to take the upper bolt off, it's like six inches long, so you take it out, take it out, boom, hits the fucking motor. So you can't get it all the way out. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, now we need to take the fans off. Um, which is not hard at all. Uh, two bolts up top, and they just pull right up. Um, Sounds like a job for me. After you get all the uh, stuff disconnected. All the connectors and the, what, are there yep, any? So it's, yeah, so it's, you do it and save us time today. Damn. I haven't been able to do that anyway. Let's really get in there. There you go. <laughs> well, because dirt gets inside of the connect. You see that shit? Mm. Dirt gets inside of it, even though it's got a weather pack seal. And then, uh, yeah. Are you taking the clips off of it? Yeah, I have to. Are these the clips that break all the time? Yep. But you have a I mean, the, tool for that. all of them break all the time. This is a clip remover tool that works sometimes. Yeah, well, this clip is in. That clip this is one, shot. It sits in it. a fucking dirt spot. That's off. Oh, that's busted. That clip's already, but yeah, busted. With the harness for the fans? Is that what that is? Yeah. Alright, well, we're gonna get these fans off and then we'll be back. Fans out pretty quick, actually. Uh, and then the bolt. That pesky bolt. Where'd you put it in here? This job. What bolt is that? Alternator. And it's super long. Yeah, because it goes through the front end of your timing cover and bolts the alternator to the engine all in one. So we did have to remove the fans, but that's cool. We expected that anyway. That's my rag. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, you guys think the what? That crank? 
hopefully. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit, though. Uh, Are you going to take all of the pulleys off? Like, no, no. Just the, the crank is left? The crank, well, we got to undo these two bolts for the timing cover for the AC. Um, this power steering has got to come off. Oh, so all of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this has got to come off. Let's see if this... Mm -hmm. Oh, the harness? What mm -hmm. else? This one here? Mm hmm. Okay, let's see if I can. Oh, man. Dang, these are really on there. Just to clarify, these are push, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you push to lock and pull. Yeah, sometimes I use. Oh, I got it. There you go. Who's gonna come off? The, the ground. This thing. Okay. So crack it loose, right? This one? Yeah. I'll do this. Do you have a small one? Can I should just do them by Three hand? Of, yeah. So that's gotta come off. All of these gotta come off. So these here, these bolts. I know on the timing cover, but yep. This clip. Yep, that's gotta get unplugged. Okay. Oh, all right. This is the same idea. Push. Yep. Okay, that's that. This comes around here. So this, these all have to come off, right? Yep. This. One. And these guys are what? Very Twelve. Ten. Ten, actually. Yeah. Maybe I just need better leverage. So this is because dirt gets in here and yeah. grime. Yeah, that's oh, also plastic. It. There you go. All right. Determined, I guess. All right, there's a couple grounds you got to take off. <laughs> All right, but I'm just trying to figure out how this comes up. But we can't, right? Um, like, how are you going to move this part? All right, so... Bad? Yeah. So what I would do Take is I'm gonna clip off. come do that clip. So that's where we're at. We'll just dip this unbolted, so this has gotta come out. Okay. This is gonna be a pain in the ass to get out. So what I do is I can get a flathead that fits inside of the M6 hole and then I'll put it towards the back of the timer, a uh, timing cover. Oh, I see. And then it I'll pull leverage. up. Break the screwdriver. So I'll give it a couple, I'll go back and forth. <laughs> this one's really fighting me. Get everything yeah. off of it? Yeah, it's just two bolts. Wow. I mean, I see it. Is there a bolt underneath it? No. It's just no. sitting in a. Yeah, it just slides in. You think it got all like rusted? I'm sure it's got corrosion and shit. Yeah, it looks like it's got all kinds of crap in there. <laughs> Anyone makes a flashlight that would be uh, perfect for jobs like this, please comment right, so it. Because every flashlight Edgar has sucks. And he's got like a million different ones. Okay, these are all flashlights. The only good one is this Joan up here. This is the best. Flashlight, flashlight. So what are you doing now? You gonna take the cover off? No, you gotta take the power steering pump off. Oh, that's right. Power 
first here. Yeah. You gonna just move it or? Just kind of push it out the way and let it hang just because I don't want to drain I was gonna say. all the fluid and make a mess. Should be able to. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pull it out and let it down there because there's let's just two bolts out. back here that I have to take off. Let's see, where are you talking about them? Can I see anything? So, in order to take this cast iron bracket off, which will allow me to take off this front bracket, um, there's two bolts. Oh, I see the one, one here, here and then one one back there. Yeah. So the one that's a little deeper in um, the the, no, the the closer one is actually a little bit harder because it's almost right behind this plate. He's so you. Oh, this place actually loose. Hmm? It was loose? Yeah, just moving a little bit. Oh, no, it's because the alternator. Oopsie. All right. I can only see the one. Are you going to move the alternator? Yeah. You're going to pull it out. Well, you're not going to be able to get it out without dropping that front bar. I'm just going to let it dangle. Oh, you just moved it. Oh, there are the two bolts, I see. So those two bolts hold the covers on? Um, yeah, they're part of what needs to come off to get the cover off. Gotta drain the oil because we got to take off the lower oil pan to get to the bottom bolts of the front timing cover. Don't get the bee, Bobby. You're gonna get bit. No. And there's a bolt back here that I have to get to. Where? For the AC. I have to unplug the AC compressor. Oh, okay. You have to completely undo the AC compressor, the power steering, and the alternator. Yes. Okay. Everything's gotta get out of the way. Everything's gotta move. Way of the for this top cover to come off. Look, now the, um, the cover is rtb right? So after we take the bolts off, we'll have to crack it open. Okay, so we're taking the oil pan down now. It looks like this oil pan may have been off before. What? It looks like this oil pan may have been taken off before. Go ahead and take it. Uh, yeah, well, Andy's here, so he, he uh, actually, technically, I gave him a ride here. Edgar took it off when I wasn't filming because that's what he do. But I how did. does it look? Can we see that at least? Uh, well, we've got no no okay. gasket on the bottom of the pan. Which that's is good. good. Yeah? All right. All right. No material, so that's a good sign. Good. All Earl. All Earl. Oh, that's good. It doesn't look like a W. So you move this, why? Um, so we can get to the torque converter bolt so we can lock down the torque converter and get the harmonic balancer bolt off. Or else you'd just be spinning the engine and cranking it over without actually removing a bolt. Okay. Oh, okay. 
All right, cool. Then I can just have a good slice of you. Love me by. Taste great, less filling. Hey. <laughs> what did she say when you said that? His wife is so used to him. I feel like she was just like, love you, bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. How far down you got to go with this? You got to get the back cover off too? No. Oh. You'll see it in just a sec. There she be. Oh, it does, doesn't look like anything's poking out. Oh, it's not even leaking. It's something else. No, have a good one. You too, see you, Dan. Can I pull this off? Yeah. Throw me nuts. So what are you looking at, babe? Uh, just looking to see if any of these gaskets are blown. It doesn't look like it. No, which is good because then there really shouldn't be any like damage to the engine at all. Yeah. So I'll we'll start cracking them loose. Let's we'll see. Well, that's what you rather see. That yeah. like because we already know it happens. So if you catch it beforehand. That one's starting to come loose. The bottom. Yeah. Oh, that one was really loose. Oh, wait, hold on, which one? There's one all the way in the corner. In the corner, oh yeah. no. Yeah, what's the bad? bed? That one's a little loose. I mean, yeah, I mean, most of them were, they had a couple loose ones, you know. The thing with this hardware is it really should be like Loctited down. Because, you know, being that it's a Phillips drive, you can't really get a whole lot of torque when it comes to wrenching it down on it. So. Yeah. That's 180 out. So now what are you doing? Wait, now I'm putting the engine at top dead center. That way when I take the, uh, take the timing chain off. Yeah, so. There's a dot here and a dot here that would normally line up with the colored timing chain link, but the timing chain is, you know, out of rotation um, in regards to the tooth. But uh, that, it also lines up with this nick right here on the on the bottom of the cover. There. Okay, I see that. So you have to line line those up and then there's also a mark so this keyway is going to pretty much line up with that mark see I'm a little bit forward here um, this keyway will line up with that mark and on the timing chain that uh, let's see, we got that yellow, orange, yellow. All right, two yellows, one orange. So the orange over here would line up with the crank on this narc nick down here. This yellow tooth would normally line up with that dot, and the other yellow tooth would line up with this dot. So I know we have it on TDC because that uh, lines up with that on the oil pump. Both dots are facing up towards the bulge on the uh, timing cover. And so right now it's at TDC. I, I don't care what the timing chain says, um, just because I, it's not lined up correctly with the teeth. But once we put it back on, we will make sure it lines up correct with the uh, with the teeth on the gear. Yeah. So you know, so the engine. Is at top yeah, dead I know the engine's at top dead yeah. center, even though the timing chain is not timed up with the cam gears properly. But that doesn't matter because it's all the new. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all going to come off. And when I put it back on, then I will manually line up the links yeah. um, with the dots.